So the cool ones were Michael Sheen, James McAvoy, Stephen Campbell Moore, Fenella Wilgar, Emily Mortimer. They were the cool ones. And then there was me. Hello, I'm David Tennant, and these are my film firsts with BAFTA. Probably the first film that I remember really getting obsessed with was Star Wars, the original Star Wars. It came out in 1977, so I was six. My Auntie Mary took me. It was a big deal at the time. It was one of those, you know, it became a sort of, uh, you know, Star Wars was a film that wasn't necessarily expected to become the global phenomenon that it did. But I remember it certainly made its way, that that sense of, of phenomenon made its way to Paisley. And we went to see Star Wars and it was extraordinary, mind-bending, uh, like nothing I'd ever seen before. And I became very obsessed with Star Wars from that moment on to this day, probably. I do remember, I don't know how old I was, but I remember seeing The Evil Dead, the first The Evil Dead, on a sort of, possibly even a slightly bootlegged VHS somewhere at a friend's house, thinking, this is really cool. We're really watching, watching Forbidden Fruit here and having nightmares for weeks weeks the bit where one of the zombies stabs someone in the leg with a pencil i think that's the thing that really haunted me for some reason the first film i remember going to the cinema to watch would be the land that time forgot uh starring doug mcclure would have been the mid 70s i would have been five maybe six years old and we were on holiday in millport in the isle of cumbry and we went to the cinema that they had there and i was transfixed I mean, it may not be a, a film that has particularly punched through the mists of time, but I remember it very clearly. They go through a sort of underground tunnel in a sort of submarine thing, and they end up in this uh, the land that time forgot. The clue's in the title. And they encounter dinosaurs. It's basically Jurassic Park without quite the budget. When I saw the film again in slightly older years, I realised the dinosaurs were actual lizards with bits stuck on them, filmed in close-up. But listen... It worked for me when I was five. I'd recommend it. My first performance, uh, it was probably in primary school. It was The Town Mouse and The Country Mouse. I played The Country Mouse and there were four performances over a week. No, there were three performances and a dress rehearsal over the week. I was in the B cast. So we did the dress rehearsal and the second night. But the chap who was playing The Country Mouse in, let's call it the A cast, got sick. So I ended up doing the dress rehearsal and all three nights. It felt like a door opened that day and I ran through it. First time I met Russell T Davis must have been probably the read through for Casanova, which was uh, a, a series he wrote. That would have been 2004, I think we made that. It was a lengthy audition process, but I didn't meet him at, at, at any of those moments. I think, I, think it was, I think it was probably when we read through the scripts for the first time. I imagine, I don't know. If he was even there for that, I, I can't remember. Russell, do you remember? My first ever audition. Um, I don't know if I do remember my first ever audition, actually. I remember lots of terrible auditions. Um, what would my first ever audition have been? It was probably for an anti-smoking film that Glasgow Council were making. I don't remember the audition. I do remember getting the job and playing the sort of, the kind of, I mean, I was... 15 at the time, maybe 16. And I played the sort of the bad kid who was uh, smoking behind the bike sheds and trying to enlist others into his terrible ways. I'd never smoked a cigarette in my life. And I spent the day trying to avoid having to light it. And if you were able to track down the uh, this piece of film, um, you will see that uh, despite extolling the virtues of smoking uh, to my... Uh, my, the, the other characters in the film. I never actually did it myself. I've always had a mastery over props. And that was the first, my first time on a set, yeah. And it was uh, it playing the, the bad kid. I, wonder, I wish I could remember his name. I do remember he wore a, a, a black denim jacket, which I managed to take home with me. Uh, I mean, I think I was invited to, uh, and wore for years after. It was about the coolest piece of clothing I have ever owned. And that includes this jumper, so that's saying something. First film that made me want to act? I don't know. I don't remember a particularly vivid singular experience when I was young, watching a movie that made me think, oh, that's that's what I want to do. I remember maybe when I was slightly older, when it was a, 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 around the time I was at drama school, seeing particular performances that really 
made me think that's film acting, specifically film acting. There's something about the kind of the specificity of those moments and knowing how to tell a story in close up, which some people just have a kind of a way of the, the, with the, using the tiniest moment or the tiniest gesture. I always think of there's a moment in Remains of the Day where uh, Emma Thompson and Anthony Hopkins are, are are having a scene and he's he's he plays this very buttoned up sort of butler. It's a magnificent performance because he does virtually nothing throughout the whole film and yet you understand every single moment that he's living through or the layers of of um, complexity, the layers of self-consciousness, um, the layers of professionalism, all bound into this extraordinary performance. There's a moment where he just lets Emma Thompson in by releasing his grip on a book. It tells you so much about that character and about where he is in that moment in time and all the sort of torture that he's going through. And, and it's done with the tiniest of gestures. Moments like that, when you see those moments on, on film, uh, they are, it's, it's transporting. It just, it tells you, it gives you an access to that particular human being's experience that's so unique and thrilling. First time I was recognised by I don't well the first time I got recognised for being in something I do remember very vividly was uh, in Crouch End in London and I'd I was in uh, a show called Taken Over the Asylum which was a BBC drama uh, on what back some somewhere in the early nineties and um, there was a road closed and myself and this bloke realised we that to get into Crouch End we had to sort of go through this kind of over this sort of bridge bit and we sort of together clambered over this thing that we probably weren't meant to clamber over and halfway around he turned to me and went you Campbell Bean which was the name of that character on uh, Take Another Sand and that was the first time I remember it was quite peculiar and quite um, not alarming but I do remember thinking, this is very peculiar that this, I'm having this very uh, everyday, very um, rather uh, pragmatic domestic experience. And this man is, uh, was watching me on the telly last night. It was a bit of an out of body experience. I don't know how interesting that story is, but it's just come back to me in a rush. I wonder where he is now. The first time I met Catherine Tate, I do remember very vividly, it was uh, on the set of Doctor Who. But she was being, she was going to do a Christmas special and that was trailered, if you like, by a tiny little moment at the end of the previous series where she appeared in the TARDIS in a wedding dress. Um, but to keep all that a secret, we filmed it after the filming day had finished. Everyone went home and then a tiny little skeleton crew came back after hours um, and filmed it in an evening. Catherine got kind of smuggled in from a local hotel under a blanket. Uh, so that nobody knew she was going to be part of Doctor Who. And we filmed the very end of that previous episode. We, we spent about an hour just uh, capturing that moment where she shows up in the TARDIS for the first time. That was the first moment Catherine and I had ever met. What? Oh, I get starstruck by people I'm working with all the time. The first time? Hmm... Oh, I don't know. I mean, I had there. I've, there have been certain people I've worked with that I've found it very difficult to. It's taken me quite a few days to be able to kind of address them as normal human beings because they, they, you know, they, they, they're they're someone I've admired or have grown up with, or um, that was certainly the case with Michael Gambon, Maggie Smith, um, Billy Connolly. I was. Uh, it took me about a week to be able to look Billy Connolly in the eye. Um, uh, luckily, in all three of those cases, they turn out to be wonderful, glorious human beings who don't disappoint on, on any level. Michael Gammon, of course, sadly no longer with us, but I, get to, I got to work with him more than once, and each one was a, a total thrill. Uh, it, it's, it's very exciting when you meet someone who's been, who, who you've looked up to, who you've slightly idolised, and they don't disappoint. That's one of the great joys of being in this industry. And then every now and again, they do disappoint, but I'm not telling you the names of any of them. The first time I met Michael Sheen, mm, it must have been something to do with the film Bright Young Things, which we were both in, and that would have been 2003, something like that, 20 years ago. And Stephen Fry directed that, and there was a little 
bunch of us uh, that wear the Bright Young Things. I was slightly on the periphery because I played a character called Ginger Little John, who was not a Bright Young Thing. He was a sort of, although he was of the same peer group, he was a sort of fuddy-duddy who, di who wasn't one of the cool ones. So the cool ones were, let me see if I can remember, Michael Sheen, James McAvoy, Stephen Campbell Moore, Fenella Woolgar, Emily Mortimer. They were the cool ones. And then there was me, who sort of sometimes went along to the kind of rehearsal processes or the hangouts or the getting to know you sessions and sometimes didn't get invited. Uh, so I got to know Michael a bit then, but not that well because I was not one of the cool kids. But it's only in relatively recent years that we've ended up actually working together because on Bright Young Things we don't share the screen, I don't think. But yes, yeah, so I've probably sort of known him for about 20 years. He's very old. I'm still considerably young. First film I ever wanted to show my kids. I don't know that any time I've ever wanted to show my kids a film is it has been the film they wanted to watch. I think one finds that children very quickly develop their own uh, uh, preferences and prejudices and desires. I have found that whenever I've tried to go, no, come on, kids, sit down. This is the one you're going to like. It, it, it's it's of little interest to them. They will find what they want to watch, and they do. And there are certain films that I have seen many, many, many times because uh, one of the uh, uh, refrains of childhood would seem to be that when you light on some movie that you like, you like to watch it a lot, a lot, a lot. I've seen the first two Trolls movies a lot. Um, I think I can quote every line from Frozen. But Encanto, that was a big one in our house. Um, I mean, luckily, they're all they're all great films that you don't mind watching again and again and again. So uh, that's what I... For all parents out there, I pray that the movies your children decide to alight on are ones that you can bear to watch because you're going to watch it a lot. Good luck. <laughs>